Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixim Perfect, and today I'm going to share with you how to create transparent PNGs with shadows included. What does that mean? Well, let's say you have an object with a transparent background as a PNG. What if I told you that it came with its original shadow also transparent so that no matter what background you slap it on, it will look absolutely realistic with its own shadow. So today I'm going to show you how to do that without having to dabble with blend modes, without having to worry about painting the shadows, none of that. It's pretty easy to do. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you're aware and download this photo and follow along, you already know what to do. Check the links in the description. So let's say we have to select this purse and we want to create a transparent PNG of that. So first of all, you can use the pen tool for it. I would highly recommend the pen tool for products. They are perfect because they are the best things in the world when it comes to selecting objects with hard edges. However, in this case, I'm pretty lazy. So I'm just going to choose the object selection tool and you can choose the lasso mode right over there and then just make a rough selection around the object and Photoshop will automatically determine the edges. It might not be as perfect as the pen tool, might not be as clean and refined as the pen tool because it's absolutely manual. But in this case, it does a pretty good job to save time in a tutorial like this. It has selected extra, of course. So all we have to do is to hold the Alt key or the Option key and tell Photoshop, hey Photoshop, this is not a part of the object. It'll automatically create that edge right over there. Similarly, right in here, hold the Alt key or the Option key and tell Photoshop roughly that I don't think you have done a correct selection right here. It messed up a little bit. Photoshop's been acting crazy. Maybe it's drunk. But let's see how it does right now. Well, it's kind of messing things up. Let's try to be a little more precise. Hold the Alt key or the Option key and then let's clearly tell Photoshop, all right, this is not how it's going to go. Well, let's hope it does a good job. Okay, it does an okay job. Let's work right here. Okay, we can actually work with that. Okay, Photoshop doesn't recognize it. No problem. We can always get back to our old trusted lasso tool and just erase that out. Similarly, right here, let's see what it has done. So we can just make sure that everything is correct right here. Good. Now, what about the other areas? It's pretty much good to go. Again, pen tool is the best. Now, if you press the mask button right over there, you have a transparent background. Right. But if you save this as a PNG and you put in some other background on some other image on or a product photo on Amazon, whatever there is. So let's choose this background or let's choose a blue background, a light blue, nice background, something like this. If you hit OK, if you place it under the purse, this just doesn't look right. You need the shadow for it. So how do you include the shadow in a PNG? Well, that's what this tutorial is all about. So let's delete this. This was just for demonstration. First of all, before we head over to extracting the shadows, we have to just solve one more problem. In the original image, if you look at the ground, the surface was pink. And as a reflection from the surface, it's taking up that color on the purse. So we need to remove that color first before we head over to just extracting the shadows because we can be placing it in blue, green, red, yellow any colored backgrounds and we don't want that reflection right over here. We don't want that pink tinge there. We need to get rid of that. First of all, hold the shift key and click on the mask button to make it available, make it visible and then click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose hue saturation. Now using hue saturation, we will target those colors with the help of the hand right over there. Just select that and single click on the color that you want to target. It might not be perfect in the first go. We might have to adjust it. But for right now, let's take the hue all the way to the right, the saturation all the way to the right, just to see which areas are being targeted. If you look at these area, these range sliders right over here, let me just scroll down. Have a look at these range sliders. It just means that these areas, these colors are being affected. The top bar that you see is the color that you're selecting and the bottom bar is the color that it's changed to. Make sense? So if I make a narrow range selection around this red, see that area right here is selected and that's denoted by the top bar and at the bottom bar as you change the hue, let me just make it a little bigger, as you change the hue, see the bottom bar of that area changes which means that we are changing that red to whatever color that's showing up right there. All right, now let's take the hue all the way to the right just to see what's happening right there. Now let's make it a little 
broader on the left hand side. Now these are transition sliders. The slider on the very left and the slider on the left, the more gap between these two sliders you have, the more transition you have between the areas that are targeted and the areas that are not targeted, the softer the transition would be. So similarly on the right hand side, let's increase it quite a bit. If we increase it too much, it's going to select the purse as well. We don't want that. This much is okay. Now the transition, as you can see, is very harsh. So let's make that transition smoother. Yeah, that seems to be about right. Now it's time for us to bring the saturation and the hue back to normal. So let's bring the hue to zero and the saturation to zero as well. So first of all, let's make it a little darker. We have already targeted that area by taking down the lightness. See, it's already getting a little better. Now let's play with the hue to take away the pink. If we take it a little bit to the right, it takes that away. Now you can also play with the saturation, bring it down or bring it up. That's absolutely up to you. So I'm going to bring it up a little bit since we took down the lightness down. So if we just mess with the lightness too much, it just affects the saturation. So we might have to balance that. Okay, that seems to be about right. You can always get back to this later. But let's take a look at the before and after. We have absolutely removed the pink reflection. So pink light. Here's the before, here's the after. See that? We removed it. If it's looking too less saturated, you can always double click on the symbol right there. Now all of it is gone. It's not actually gone. We were targeting the reds. So we have to go to the reds right there with the drop down and then just increase the saturation quite a bit and play with the hue. Okay, now let's take a look. Here's the before. Here's the after. This one is a little better. Now it's time for us to extract the shadows. Now for the shadows, you might want to make a copy of this purse right there. So press Ctrl or Command J and you can name one purse and you can name the bottom one shadow. Okay. Now for a moment, you can just turn off both of these layers, the hue saturation layer and the purse layer. And now you can select the mask right there. You can turn off the mask momentarily because you don't need it or better yet, just delete the mask. We can create a brand new mask. Delete it. Now we can make a selection of the shadow area. Just make sure it's just selecting all of the shadows and more roughly. Okay. And we just want to make sure we have it all selected. We don't want to miss out on any area. Okay. Good. Now we can click on the mask button. Now we have that shadow selected. Now we can use color range to smoothly target the shadows. So let's go to select and then color range. Now inside of color range, you would go and choose shadows because we have to select the shadows, right? Now you can choose the selection preview to grayscale. That way you have a better idea. First, let's take the fuzziness and the range all the way to the left. Now slowly and gradually increase the range. And just when you begin to see the shadows, stop. Right now, we are just selecting parts of the purse. We are not seeing any shadows. Now we are beginning to see shadows. Just when we cross 31, 32, we see shadows. So just stay a little away from that number. So if it's 31, 32, just keep, keep it on 28 or 29. So I'm going to keep it 28 and then slowly and gradually increase the fuzziness. Now, how much would you increase the fuzziness? We don't have to increase it so much that you begin to see this border right there. So we have to be very careful about it. Just make sure that you don't see this border. I'm going to zoom in right there. Gradually increase it. Just when you begin to see the border, stop. So we are seeing the border at about 80. So I'm going to keep it at 76. We don't see the border now. Let's look at the shadow that it has selected. It looks pretty darn good. I might take the range down even more because it's selecting it too much, I guess. So we're going to go at about 20. Feel good about 20. Okay. Hit OK. Now we have the shadow selected. Now you can turn on the purse and the hue saturation and have a look. Pretty good shadow, isn't it? Now you can keep it, but in some backgrounds, it just might not work. If you are just working with the brand colors, probably keeping it in pink, brownish backgrounds, that would work amazingly for this brand. If you want it to be versatile, you have to pick a color of the shadow that goes with everything. Can you guess what that color is? Usually what colors are shadows? They can be dark green, dark purple, dark black, dark blue. What is common in all of that? Dark. And what color signifies dark? Black. There's no 
color that signifies dark better than black. So all you gotta do is to create a solid color adjustment layer and then just copy the mask. So click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose solid color and choose black, the darkest color right there. And then you can just copy the mask by holding the Alt key or the Option key, click and drag the mask to the black solid, solid color adjustment layer, hit yes, and then you can delete this colorful shadow. If you need it, you can keep it, but this is pretty darn good. Now you can get back to the purse and refine the mask, but I'm too lazy to do that. Now you can save it as a PNG, but before you save that as a PNG, you need to crop it well, right? Just optimize it a little bit. So first, let's make a selection of the purse by holding the control key and clicking on the mask button. Then we need to add the selection of the shadow. So hold the shift key and the control key and click on the mask of the shadow. Now all of that is now selected. Now press C for crop and hit enter. Now this is optimized, beautifully transparent. Now you can save that, export this as a PNG by going to file, export and then export as. Now if you're Wondering what is the difference between save as and export as we already have a video on that. Go ahead and watch that. Now let's choose the format PNG. We of course want transparency. So make sure that is checked. You can also check smaller file if you want. But right now this is fine. And make sure you're converting it to sRGB. Very important for web. Now let's export this. So I'm going to save it as purse.png and hit save. Now, whatever background you're working with, you can just easily import that. So I was thinking maybe let's use some luxurious marble textures. By the way, I highly recommend Envato Elements for any kind of creative assets that you're looking for. They have everything. And the great part is you just pay a monthly fee and you have access to all of their assets. It's not like most other stock websites where you have to pay per assets. It's all unlimited. And if you look at the content of it, it's just mind boggling. Just look at it. Stock videos, video templates, music, sound effects, graphic templates. They also have Photoshop actions, plugins, presets, everything that you name it. 3D and I don't know what not. Add-ons, fonts, photos, any creative asset you want. It's all there. And there's an offer going on right now. It's about 70, 75% off for the first month. So if you want to check out the offer, check the link in the description. So we are looking for marble textures. Let's see what we get. Probably we'll find something nice. There are some stock videos for it as well. So I like these. So let's directly download that. And they come with a license. Commercial license. You can use it commercially, non-commercially, anything. Just choose the project title. You can create a project title. And you can choose add and download. So I'm just going to download this. So here we are in our finder or explorer. And I have this downloaded zip. Right click on it. And then you can extract the zip using anything you want. So I'm just going to extract it right over here. We have some textures, some very nice textures. So let's see what do we have. Some exotic ones. Let's go with this one. So we can just drag it and drop it into Photoshop on a brand new canvas. So let's say you're working with something. You're working with a magazine page or you're working with a magazine cover even or a billboard. And you want to paste this slap on this PNG. All you got to do, purse.png, let's drag it and drop it over that. Take a look, it will come with that shadow. And that is so realistic, isn't it? Now, by the way, you can just unlock the background layer by clicking on the lock and right click on it and then convert to smart object. Press Ctrl or Command T, right click on it and then choose perspective. You can just add a little perspective here and just make it a little more realistic if you want to. Yeah, that looks cool. Okay. Hit enter and there you have it. You can add some wonderful text here to make it exciting. And once you have added a perspective to it, you can also replace it with any other texture. All you got to do is to right click on it and then choose replace contents and you can replace it with any texture you want. So let's go with this one, click on place and it will follow that perspective. Have a look. That is even more luxurious. So that's how you can include the shadows with PNG. All you have to do is once you extract the object, you can use color range to select the shadows. And once you have a selection of the shadows, you can create a solid color adjustment layer, black solid color adjustment layer with that selection as the mask. And then you can crop it properly and export it as a PNG. That's all there is. And then you can import it and slap it on anything you like.
I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pixim Perfect free for everybody forever. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Until then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.